So after the performance, people started posting videos on Twitter, one of them being this one. <laughs> This video has now given people the opportunity to try to say that the crowd was dead because of how quiet it was and one person being heard in the background saying, who are they? Which first of all, why are you using a one minute clip of their performance to try to summarize the entire 30 minutes of it? Second, this clip was a good length away from the performance. If you look at the plenty fan cams from this performance, not only can you see people coming closer to them and the large crowd, but you can hear the cheers. But no, you wouldn't look at them because you'd rather watch a video called Esper performing for a dead crowd at Coachella to validate your own theories that they were going to fail. You probably clicked on this video too thinking I would shit talk them and comfort your thoughts based on the thumbnail too. But sorry to disappoint, Espa served and where were your favorite idols? Probably watching it. I made that video two years ago and it has aged pretty horribly in my opinion. Not because I was wrong, because I know and have the receipts to show that I was on the right side of K-pop history, but because since then, nothing has changed. All I have seen this last week after La Seraphim's first Coachella performance is the fact that the K-pop fandom, specifically girl group stands because you don't see this type of bandwagon hate with boy groups for some weird reason, have learned nothing. I've seen tweet after tweet, TikTok after TikTok, bashing La Seraphim for their supposed horrendous Coachella performance while hyping up the previous girl groups to perform there as if they weren't absolutely tearing them apart years before. I'm very aware of the fact that even if I do give a disclaimer, there's going to be few who actually take it seriously. But to the few who can understand that comparison isn't always entirely slander and hate, please know that what I'm about to say about Blackpink and Espa is not out of malice, but rather the uncomfortable truth that their stands pretend not to notice. Again, if you check the facts, I was their biggest supporter during those trying times and still think their performances have aged pretty well despite their flaws, but a lot of Blinks and Mize are trying their absolute best to rewrite history to make their faves look better, and after the absolute hell they've put La Seraphim through this week, I wasn't gonna let that happen. This isn't to say Fear Knots aren't out there poking sleeping bears too, but when almost the entire K-pop fandom is coming for your faves, you're constantly on defense mode and critical thinking goes out the window, so I'm gonna give them the grace I gave to Mize and Blinks during their Coachella era and say that they're just trying to defend their faves. However, that's also why I'm not giving the same treatment to Blinks and Mize because they've been through this and should know better but are still deciding to punch a group while they're down. Like, let's talk about Blinks praising Blackpink for their stage presence to shade Los Seraphim as if they didn't have the same shaky, shouty performance the year before. Yep, let's take off those rose-colored glasses for a second because once you do, the amazing stage presence and the way they're hyping up the crowd sounds oddly similar to the way La Seraphim does, yet one is called unnatural and untalented, while the other is praised for their energy as if it's the best thing since sliced bread. And Mize are awfully busy praising Espa's singing to bash La Seraphim as if they didn't get torn apart for their stage presence and dancing skills, which is something that La Seraphim is great at. I also can't believe that they have the audacity to be tweeting anything like this when just two years earlier you could replace two words in that sentence and it could apply to their faves as well. Because let's not forget that Espa was incredibly underprepared for Coachella and were arguably worse off than La Seraphim since they were invited by 88 Rising last minute with minimal backup dancers, no remixes, weak stage presence, and no live performance experience. No wonder it was so messy looking back because SM literally threw them on stage and told those poor girls to make the best of it. So yeah, again, Mize, I don't think you have any room to be talking here. After talking about the other two groups' flaws, I guess it's time to give people what they actually came here for, which is a brutal review of La Seraphim's Coachella performance, because apparently other K-pop stands haven't said enough already, and there's no limit to the amount of hate content people can watch. But honestly, it's not going to be that negative, because unpopular opinion alert, I didn't think it was that bad. After watching it, I was ready to see Twitter praising their improvement and for me to post a super positive review about their amazing comeback story. But I was so shocked to see how negative everyone was being. I get that it may have not been everyone's cup of tea, but I was genuinely confused when reading tweets of their quote-unquote horrible vocal performance with attached clips of Chaewon's one vocal crack throughout the entire performance and the other members' weaker vocal points at the end of the performance. I was asking myself, did we watch the same thing? Because the way they performed reminded me a lot of Blackpink's performance, where the stage presence overall was pretty strong, and even though their live singing wasn't the best, they still did well and were way 
better than their now infamous encore stage last month. Looking at the members individually, here's how I'd rank them. Unche would definitely come in last, unfortunately, because you could just tell she was holding back most of the performance. I think it was obvious that she is not confident in singing live, and because of that, she couldn't fully be present while performing. What makes matters worse is she didn't sound the greatest either, probably again because of those nerves that were throwing her off, which is sad because we now know that her worries weren't for no reason, as that's the thing everyone has been making fun of her for for the last week. Kazuha would be in fourth because she was definitely more comfortable on stage and didn't let her weaker vocal skills keep her from performing. Most of her lines are rap anyway, so it's a lot easier for her to be stable on those, but she still tried for every singing line she had, and even though the infamous clip of her singing Fire in the Belly didn't make her look too good, I still applaud her for trying rather than taking the easier route and lip syncing like they were doing in other parts of the performance. I know people would expect the main vocalist to rank higher, but third place is just where Yeonjun belongs, to me at least. She was definitely carrying the vocal side of the performance, but she really didn't steal my attention as much as the other two did. There's probably some of you out there who are thinking, why the hell is Sakura ranked second when she is the weakest vocalist of La Seraphim? And that question tells me all I need to know about some of you, and that is the fact that a lot of you don't know what Coachella or any concert is about. Because sure, even on her best day, Sakura will never be a vocal god. But you put that girl on a stage and she will perform. And during Coachella, that is what she did. She was stable in most of her lines, hyping up the crowd, and making the performance memorable. No matter what anyone else says, she showed up and did her job. The member that did the best was definitely Chewon as she gave the best of both worlds. Not only was she great at performing like Sakura, but she was also right up there with Yunjin carrying the vocal side of the performance as well. Oh god, I can already hear someone typing in the comments about her one vocal crack, but that's a normal thing that happens to singers and was the one mistake she made at the end of a 40 minute performance that she recovered from with a high note right after. So yeah, I don't know, using that as proof that she sucks or something is just a weak argument and doesn't really matter to me. It just shows that she she's human. And what's strange is that everyone loves to say, let idols make mistakes, you know, they're only human, until they actually are, and everyone takes it as a time to strike. Like, no wonder Sakura made a post about this, because she sees right through you all. All those tweets talking about how it's vocals that matter the most, but when Espa did serve vocals, they were told that they're idols too, and stage presence and dancing is just, if not more, important. It just shows how flimsy K-pop stands standards are, how they change day by day, and are never achievable. All she and the rest of La Seraphim really can do is try their best at this point. What's even worse is that Sakura is now receiving hate for this post and is being called unprofessional when we know damn well that if a male idol posted this, they'd be praised and respected for how real and raw they are. The same thing goes for Chewon's post of Doja Cat flipping people off because, again, it would have been go off on Bothered King. He's so winning the I don't give a fuck war. <laughs> And it's not like this is something new that is only happening to La Seraphim because we've seen the same story play out before and it's a cycle that girl group stands tend to forget while they're having a little too much tearing apart female idols. It was done to girl groups in the fourth gen where for the last two years, every month there would be a new girl group that would be targeted for the littlest of reasons. And I thought that era was over now, but it turns out Coachella has reawakened this trend so it could come back and finally strike La Seraphim. Or instead of reawakening the trend, the event has given girl groups stands the opportunity to start a yearly tradition where they take it upon themselves to tear down the girl group that attends like an innocent side quest in a video game, because to them it's just another moment in K-pop while these idols have to live with the effects of their short-lived but massive hate trains for the rest of their careers. They did it with Espa, they did it to Blackpink, and now they're doing it to La Seraphim. Now let me ask you, Two years from this video, who do you want to be? The fan that stuck with the majority and laughed while humiliating a group of five girls? Or do you want to be the person who realized that these idols are also human, who don't deserve to be torn apart for just doing their job?